Good evening. Welcome. We made it. It is the, it's undoubtedly the last video of the year. We are closing in on the midnight mark here, so no more new albums will be coming out. Normally, I do my top EPs, top demos, top albums. Um, this year, I didn't find time to prepare the entire thing. Um, I'm just going to show releases that basically are my top. I'm going to do zines, tapes and vinyl. Well, we should hit the hour mark like we usually do. Um, you know, no guests this year. Uh, it's just... I've been digging or diving into older material, uh, buying more older material. And um, yeah, the newer releases kind of suffer for it. But there's enough to, you know, at least have a top 25. On the turntable is one that just fell off uh, because of the... Yeah, because of there was so much and this came in. A little late in the year for me. This is Depravement. Pretty sure it's from Finland because uh, there's a, a person in this band that we know from other stuff. This is the picture. As it is with Zombie Dance and maybe my label of the year, I don't know, they don't put out much but when they do they always have killer material. So yeah, Depravement with their self-titles from this year. Her we know from Rigueur Sinister, um, Malefic Eye, Accursed Spectre, Rectifier, and Yogisiac. I promised uh, more zombie dance and that will pop up at the beginning of the year. And maybe here and there in this video. But yeah, some Death and Doom play very fast. Very cool cover. That's what's playing for the first few minutes. Cheers to all of you that are here, still here. Uh, we are drinking Trifontaine Eau de Lambic, if you care. Here we go, 2017. It's for the people that enjoy sour beers more. I don't know if it's a beer. So yeah, um, let's do zines first. The zines, I kind of took it from Arcane Archivist who did his favorite label, favorite zine, favorite album, something like that. So I thought not, let's not show only music. Let's do zines too because I, you know, I love zines and I've been reading a ton this year. So first one is Ancient Spirit Terror, number eight or volume eight already. Uh, very take booklets, very well produced. I think it's from Germany. Uh, what is in here? Dios Mortem, Zemiel, Cult of Abon, you know, older material, Diabolical Full Moon, Rigueur Sinister comes back, Varad Home, so yeah, Necromancia, a ton. Um, all these scenes are more in the older and arcane world. Yeah, you get the picture, it's all black and white, there's not much color in here, and if it's color, it's zombie. Uh, but yeah, they focus on. Belgium material too, of course. But again, Sinister. So, yeah, chock full of stuff. Hail Conjurer and Malefic Eye. Love her vocals. There you go, that's the first one. Second one is the third issue from Black Blood. I showed it not too long ago. Uh, Masticator of Christ's Black Blood. Very interesting interviewing style, not too serious. Love the collage work in here. Um, there is I'm not mistaken, it's Snake Whipper in here, which caught my eye. So, Blank Blood and Conspiracy with Iron Boneheads. Then the Iserne, which means iron, I guess, Dark Underground magazine from Dutch Folk. Also, very interesting, very interesting choice in uh, bands. Bad Omen, Boltenberg, <coughs> sorry, Morden Dancible, Niethoch, which is the interview that they dug up again. Satanal, Raven, and Sigrid. So, yeah, also interesting. Very Neerlandia. Let's see if there is something else. Yeah, here's the Katoy Productions. Disrupt Dark Arts from the Lowlands. Black Metal, Pagan, and Dark Indians. Also a very good one. I don't know if there are still copies of all of these, I have no idea. Then this came out a bit earlier in the year, maybe Pan Kaker, Volume 2. That's definitely in there. This is a Dutch Black Metal Part 2, or the Dutch Black Metal Special Part 2. It is A4, but it's, you know, 
don't like this. Very good scene, very informative. Uh, the first one was good, the second one is equally as good. This is the editorial Turia, Libertas, Botolistum, Maurice de Jong, Irvich, Azanul, and Wang Klank. I gave my. The first one was a bit better, but this delves in just a bit deeper. They had their first fest, of course, which was really good. Peter. Then, one that just came in and that I skimmed. Uh, I read The Forbidden Temple, Machtgraaf, um, what else? Black Majesty? No, I didn't read that one. Yeah, it's the Dungeon Grease from Zwartkunst Smederij, Reflections of the Past, Dungeon Grease, I think five, yeah. Not much on the back, it says Zwartkunst Smederij. This is uh, still available from the source, and I think the Era also has got it. Minus from the Era. yeah. Feels very old in some ways, you know, the uh, hand, writer, hand writing the specter dust from them on them. Also, very cool. Then we are reaching the top, I guess. Final methodology, I don't know where they are at at this moment. Issue 8 um, always delves or digs a bit deeper than just the music. Uh, it's, it always goes deeper into religion, into Satanism, into you know, all the themes that surround black metal. Um, and he is not afraid to just, when the interview is finished, to just go in a bit deeper. But yeah, very big Polish contingent in here, Kulti Gur. Uh, what else was in here? Thunderbolt was in here. Yes, you are. Yeah. Very interesting. They always very interesting. The um, compilations. Compilations these I've read over and over again. Very cool. Number eight. And then one that just came in, New Era magazine. That is out. You can buy the bundle too. But uh, this is five winter 2023 24. I have to thank them for uh, giving me my second rag for publicating stuff. Uh, I was in the previous one. This is also a very nice edition. Then one that I had. Tons of fun reading, especially the Strit interview, but the other ones too, is uh, Arcane Archivist, and they are at 6, from Shiver, I think that's how you pronounce it. This is in cooperation with New Era, there's a man, delves into older bands, I mean, Heimland is in it, which is a newer band, but um, the second one is Dimo Borgir, there you go. The Early Years with Sinenos. Yeah, it's all very, very good. Demos, favorite demos, and then here is the strip interview. More on that a little later. And then the one that gave me the most joy is the Banner of Evil from maybe Medieval Prophecy Records. There you go. This is number three. Yeah, the third issue, Fall of 2023, with a big ass interview um, with Funeral and Kristallnacht guy. La La I always have to read it before I can pronounce it. Uh, yeah, it's like 20 pages in here, and then um, these guys also have an interview in here, so very good. Then Zombie Dance will pop up one more. The zine that is actually zine of the year for me is the Zombie Dance Magazine Volume 3, the Brazilian Devil Worshippers Praying Book, a big ass book that comes with two CDRs chock full of Brazilian. Uh, music and it's insane what Tawik did with this one. There goes the flyer, of course. I mean, it doesn't stop. It is uh, together with the what's the other one? United Forces. This is uh, yeah something to behold. But once again, United Forces is the zine that deals the Brazilian zine that deals with the entire scene. This is just focus. This is focusing on Brazil. 100% and this is very worth it for a very good price. The behemoth flyer that goes with it, of course. So yeah, zine of the year, although it's a book, but yeah, this one. That's zines. Not sure we'll make an hour, but we'll see. I never do. So yeah, second part, we are going to go into tapes. As you can see behind me, I've put up the re-releases I was going to do. Um, a top there too or a list there too but you know they they look beautiful in the background from the behemoth to the the one that Tudegard did they're all I mean they're all 
re-released in the sense that they never came out or that they were just on CD or tape uh, before, so all mandatory releases from stuff that you know was way too overpriced or it was maybe the year before the re-releases because it's all very good material. The book, what's here, you know, Circle of Ouroboros. Very good year for those. Um, on the turntable now is Rigier Sinister with Reptile Wolf. We'll keep the trend going with Malefic Eye. She will pop up some more, I guess, because she is way too talented to not be noticed. Cheers to them. What a mess, what a mess. I'm still sick. Whatever. So, a few tapes. I think about 10, maybe a little bit more. Some were gifts, like this one. Uh, that I returned to a bunch actually. Um, Re-listening, not just new, new, new. Uh, I think, I don't know how many releases I got uh, for a normal person, it's way too much, but it was actually okay this year, <laughs> considering uh, what happened over the past 10 years. But yeah, like I said, focusing on, if you follow the Instagram, you see that um, I just bought 10 records that are way better than, than everything I have in the collection. But as a matter of speaking. Let's delve in. Gathering Stones, A Pale Omen. Uh, I got this from the man himself. This popped up on, um, what is that label? Oh, here it is. Feral Heart Productions. Um, here you go, the flyer that came with it. Um, but it's sold out. It says, uh, thank you for your interest gathering, in Gathering Stones. Hope you find the full cassette experience superior to the digital version. New album in 2024. Okay. And I did. Um, it's been a while since I checked back in with this one um, and I didn't have a ton of time to re-listen everything but um, yeah this the mixture of sounds of influences um, that come together on this tape kind of gripped me the first time and keep me coming back. Um, mastering by Kark. I don't know who that is. Yeah. So this is the first one, um, not just because it's a gift, actually because I enjoyed the tape. I enjoyed the digital, then got to talking with the guy and um, out of the goodness of his heart, he sent me one. So that's the first one. Then Black Hurst, um, from the same distro actually, this also popped up on, um, how is it, like this, it's flat. This is the re-release, I think, from the originally produced or self-produced demo, a very good, it's called Blackened Doom or Black Doom, uh, but it's a mixture. If you can call it Doom, Doom is in the more in the overtones or in the atmosphere more than in, uh, in the slow passages or whatever you want to call it. This is the card that came with it. It's kind of hard to read. Maybe it's a lyric. Into the Pentagram Records, uh, but yeah, this is a demo that came out this year that kind of gripped me in the sense. Um, yeah, that is very good for a demo and it reminded me a bit of... Terminus talked about outlaw music creeping into black metal and this is maybe one... I don't hear it a ton, I kind of know what they mean, but maybe this is a good example. It's a duo, Tyrannic Deluge and Perverse Vein, that um, yeah, they played their first live show. I've just seen video, but it also looked very good. I'll Ooh, Alchemines, I think, Mournful Shores of Black Catharsis and Hearst, the Tree Tracker. Yeah, let's see what they come up with in the, um, for a full length, I hope, uh, later this year. But yeah, I, first I didn't want to do a, um, but everybody says it, but first I didn't want to do one because, one, there are tons on YouTube, but then I started checking them out and there is no one talking about you know, the, the really underground scratchy kind of music, so I thought, yeah, why not, why not give these things a bit of a shine. And a lot of stuff will be re-popping up and a lot of labels will be the same, but it's just my interest, so that's the only caveat. Here we go, Techno Viking Kali Yuga Flavor, yes, uh, from the Aske Stable Anti-Social Culture England. Uh, they had a banger year not just on these self-release tapes, but um, a couple of Dead Stands had releases on Cold Beach, on Go To War X, a um, ton of stuff, so yeah. This one is not a Cold Dead Stands, this is, um, yeah, something very different. If you follow the label, they go, or they went from 
the image or the thing that I thought they were were raw black metal, but it's far from it. Uh, it deals in folk. It deals in there is black metal on there, but not much actually. Um, the main thing that I'm looking at his label or um, or that I'm focusing on is the Gabber and the, the way he uses industrial and techno to make these kind of weird ass mixtapes actually and Techno Viking is one of the main projects of doing that together with uh, yeah Old All I would say but it's also Techno Viking so Old All just came in which is basically Gabber mixed with um, yeah samples and all over the place then the one I haven't heard because it literally came in yesterday but that is just pure for the packaging because William contacted me after I put a photo of this on uh, one of the social media, I think Instagram of course, uh, and he said it was a pain in the ass to make and it's basically a cigarette pack, all handmade, and that, uh, that has a tape in here, it comes wrapped in a, there you go, and it's just side one and two, it's the nasty compilation, uh, I don't know, what, there's no track listing on here, there are no artists on here, so could be that it's all him doing stuff or it's really a compilation like um, the one with the hammer in the front but um, yeah the dedication to <laughs> the uh, the autistic dedication to some of this stuff is uh, actually insane but yeah this wins maybe packaging of the year definitely tape wise then my favorite tape on the Oscar label if I can call it that and that this is black metal. It's, I wouldn't call it raw anymore because raw kind of went into the the realm of social media or Instagram black metal. Um, you can find a lot of stuff in there and that's that crossover is maybe why I'm just not interested anymore in all the stuff. This is something that is completely opposite of that and this is um, Raven's Realm with a crash of heat and thunder came out early in the year, I think around March maybe, something like that, and it blew me away then, uh, and it blew me away upon re-listening. Listen to it digitally again today, but yeah, it also has uh, an audio warning that it is uh, crappy audio, but you know, very listenable when you are into raw black metal, let's call it what it is. Uh, but yeah, Hail Albion support the true underground this is a very good one this is not just raw black metal this is played in a very good a very good style it is the what eternal tyrant maybe started with their uh albion combat regiment tapes i'm looking at them right now but yeah if you can get your hands on i, I said it when i got it in if you can get your hands on it get it Coming from the same neck of the woods, I would say this is uh, the only Hodgson Pit release in here for this year. Yes, and this is Odious His with Accurate Portal Incantation. There is no real uh, top 1 to 10, but yeah, these, these are just tapes that actually that were visible when I started you know, compiling the list. I just went to my Discogs, what did I get in 2023, what was released in 2023. There's one, of course, I have to cheat. There's one cheat in there, uh, but they were all pretty visible which means I've played them a lot this is a uh, yeah this is a weird tape it's all black and white until you take out the, the tape and then it's glitchy purple um, they go further upon the sounds and the teams they created with the first record and the first demo but then expand on it very much so it is a raw in production English affair but yeah I found it hard to describe back then, but it's kind of like how to describe the logo, how to describe this band. I don't know, it's just a one-man project that is schizophrenic in nature, um, not just in sound, but also in teams and stuff like that. Acrid Portal, Incantation, Blood That Stinks, Conjuration of the Heinous Man, Intravenous Phlegm, Virulent Rune Alchemy, Product of Winter 2022. There you go. These are the handmade editions, products of the Lord. There you go. And they all came in this insane little black baggie with the Hodge and Pit logo on it. And in there was this extra stuff that made it even more schizo. There are digital downloads, handmade. I can give one away maybe. Hold on, lucky if you can read it. Will that zoom? I don't think so. Sorry. 
there is this flyer with that serial killer sun guy. There you go. Conjuration of the heinous man. There's a lot in here. And then the coolest thing is this. Uh, he did the blank books one and two designs that I never got my hands on. But it, this is like, they all come with these handmade. No, this is not a booklet, but this is like a uh, pop up. I mean, how many times do you, how much time do you have? But yeah, thank you for it. Um, very nice. The Hodge and Pit. From last year into this year, meeting the guy um, in the beginning of the year to just fortify what they are doing, what Oscar is doing, and they deserve, you know, the spots in the end of the year video or the, you know, I reluctantly not calling it a um, top whatever because I don't know. Then, unavoidable, the two medieval prophecy tapes that came out, the mischievous raid. Wraith, I think Wraith, with Hemlock and Belladonna, and then Gouffre with Demo Tree. They both stand side to side in my opinion. There was a lot of personnel change with the Gouffre. I did a uh, video for this batch that um, describes perfectly what this perfectly what this sounds like and gives a little bit of backstory. I'm not going to go it, into it again, but yeah, this is the third demo. Some people left the band. Uh, drummer is now also on vocal duty. They are still a threesome, but the sound kind of changed a little bit, but not too drastically that you don't know it. It is a demonic affair going out from hell. There are one, two, four tracks on here. Show us on the Dark Tower, Altar of Bones, and then outro. But yeah, Infam, De Condre, and Diablo. Very good tape. There you go, from a very productive crew, I should say. Drummer on here is um, yeah, he is the drummer for the Benelux. He pops up everywhere, even where you don't expect it. I mean, I got a seven inch in from um, New Era who pop up. He's even on that one, and it's an acrimatic version. So. Then mischievous rate is from the uh, Ancient Hounds Circle. I'm not sure if it's a solo. No, it is a very much a band. Oh no, 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 these are the tracks. But yeah, it is the people you would expect playing in the band. I haven't shown shown the tape, um, so this is a premiere for the channel. It was on the, um, I showed it digital on the previous video, but it's actually, once again, a very nicely done affair. It is in the vein of Medieval Prophecy, in the vein of Ancient Hounds, uh, but it is it is something else completely again. Because I think within every band or within every branch of the tree that is Ancient Hounds, I think someone else takes the lead in maybe how it is worked or reworked uh, the sound. But yeah, they always pick from circles that are not close to them, but from French, from Polish, from, you know, the, the better material. And I'm not saying it's always that, but you know, once again, a very good one two from Medieval Prophecy Records. Then, one that I started listening to recently, this is the Flaming Ouroboros, and this is not the full length that came out, that is called For the Brotherhood, I think, um, that popped up in Europe yesterday on New Era. I decided to go with the tape because it's not. I'm not always 100% into Flame Ouroboros. I am with the Blood demo. This is a very good uh, piece of. Maybe this the um, yeah the the American vibe that I was talking about that the uh, Turbans guys were talking about the Outlaw Rock. But once again, I can hear it here too. It's like the old one gash and then the trickle down effect with all these bands. Uh, Playing with Oral Poros is one of them, it's like just red on the other side. But um, a man who controls his own blood red ire controls his own path of wisdom. Yeah. One guy that is slowly building a um, yeah, a good discography. Destiny Scar, Roscoe Whisper, The Glow Dusk, I remember you. Still have to give it a few more spins, but I like it. It has 
this one less, but you know, when we talked about it in the beginning, the Smashing Pumpkin sound, it kind of evolved into, there's a lot of the uh, that, that Hem stuff has like, um, what's the other band? There's another band that also has, it's not emo, but you know, the the hardcore influence that creeps in. There's a lot of American black metal that has that influence. And this has it too, but less on here. Uh, I think the full length has more of those moments. So I give it, I give it to the Blood demo for now. One that also has this, but includes much more medieval tunes, much more, yeah, it's basically a better record in the sense that it is a full length. It is not just a demo, but the Blood Schwar, Dose of My Blood. Um, it's a love or hate relation, I think. This is also on Dead Hymns. There you go. This came out on Dead Hymns, on New Era, on I think Hodge and Fit even did a release from this one. This is the Dead Hymns tape version. There you go. I think the, the record also came out on Final Agony, which has a killer drop um, that is available at Signal X right now. All the records reasonably priced considering they are import, but yeah. I really enjoyed this one when it came out. I listened to a bunch of it then, but I I uh, didn't re-listen to it, but yeah. It has that medieval feel to it. Um, Rutschwo is Kriegmesser, guitar, bass, lyrics, and vocals, and Morgenstucht, I think, on session drums, something like that. Cover art by Mystic Barbarism. For artwork, they all had something different. I give the edge to the um, to the Hodgson Pit one. That was the, the greatest. Um, I didn't really like the LP cover, but yeah, this one is also very nice. Then to round off, because I think the record's done, uh, I got these two from M, from Car Cross, and this is Cryptic Spirit, and these are the last two tapes that I'm going to show. This is a project by M and Uke Parave from Nachlich and Purified Catacomb, um, and it sounds exactly what you think of when you put those two together. It's limited to 50. I've seen them pop up here and there. I think uh, Dead Hymns had a few copies maybe. It's on a label, but it's there's no specification. There's on these repurposed tapes. Yeah, still so very grateful for these because these are very good. If you're into that style, if you're into the, not per se power electronics, but where power electronics, ambience, horror, where that shit meets, once again, tape repurposed. And I think maybe the logo was by Siegfried. He had something to do with it, but yeah. There it is. The second demo by them. Cryptic Spirits Demo 2, also limited to 50. Simply Eternal Holocaust 1 and 2 and 3. So yeah, a lot of Holocaust here. UE vocals and guitar, M and drums and guitar. Thanks to Siegfried for the logo. There it is. Yeah, that is the tape that rounds the stack off. There is so much more and I'm forgetting, undoubtedly forgetting tons, but you know. What are you gonna do? That were the tapes. I think I have only have LPs left or demos, EPs, vinyl. I put it all together and I think I have 20, a stack of 20. So that will be part three and then we will be a done for the year. So part three. So we have the pre-meal, we have the soup, let's delve into the main course. We are listening to Blut Schur, the Dose of My Blood. So you can hear it. Um, let's dive in. My first sheet, and I think my only sheet, I'm not sure, but this is uh, Necropole with Yoga. Had to be in there. I think I predicted it last year in the video that um, this should be in here. This is on Resilience, um, Amartum's Nicopole fourth full length maybe I think so I'm not sure um, yeah very good French black metal that is maybe in a league of their own modern style and modern is a big word because he's been at it for a long time uh, this came out 23rd of December last year so basically it counts uh, there was just a CD and it was for the digital it was a long wait I think well into 2023 before we can hear this um, yeah don't let the title fool you, it's not uh, yoga in the sense that it is a calming record, it's just him yeah, exercising his demons on this sick record. Um, all music and hymns evoked, evoked between the years of 2000, 
and 15 in 2022 by Amrita. Forced in solitary toil amidst occidental mountains during the third year of the grand leveling of the old world as a blade to slash through the end times. Yeah. Very good. On Northern Heritage, I enjoyed this record a lot and I'm still enjoying this record. I'm not going to say that I fully am emerged or even comprehended because it is a lot to get into. It's not easy, clear cut black metal, but yeah, it is very good and deserves a spot on the list. It should be higher, but since it's cheap, if you see this in reverse, know that this is high up there, maybe deserves a top five spots definitely yeah. if you are in love with um Nico Paul or everything he does um yeah i don't need to tell you anymore but yeah. there is the first one Nico Paul. And the other one also just came out on vinyl so a lot to delve in okay choose to him met the guy not guy Interesting dude, interesting distro. But yeah, here we go. The first thing, Auf Norden. This is maybe the only not black metal black metal record in there. The, the time that we considered Auf Norden or you know projects like like minded this um, or like this is well behind us. Um, the Frazetta cover alone should tell you where this is going. But you were not prepared. I wasn't prepared for what this was. Um, the demo had a Phil Collins. This is the demo had a Phil Collins cover on here that was <laughs> worth it alone. It is is it good? Do I like it? I don't know, but it's here, so I guess I do. Um, yeah, this this is just a continuation of that sound. It is there is black metal in here. There is folk in here. There is a lot in here. It is not over. It is not Goat Moon. It's just something different uh, and that's what makes it I guess great the, the cover along and then you know I'm a sucker for nice looking records so yeah this is uh Finian Patriarch of course uh Bathing in Blood originally by Honeymoon Suite from the song Burning Love with adapted lyrics um Im Imperator Rain and Silver composed by Damabu um so yeah there are covers in here it's just a big ass mix um and he Finian told me something in private about this record and these kind of projects um, that was actually quite funny but um, yeah, maybe for my ears only, I don't know, for people who talk to him only, but yeah, still very interesting, um, differentiates itself from his black metal stuff in Ifrenach, um, he doesn't try to do the same, which is of course the point, um, yeah, very nicely released this may be the weirdest record uh, do I like it more than the demo material I'm not sure um, I think I need to give it a bit more time but yeah kind of like off the room it's also maybe because I met him I don't know I'm not saying I have a bond with the guy but you know and then one that should be in here in name I don't really care which record i don't prefer one over the other but this is just the last one that came in Irified catacomb with the spiritual penetration which i'm all about of course this is uh yeah once again the guy who does his you know how to describe it envisioning a soul true paradise in the cold blue flesh glow from the thickets Exalted insolence glow from the thicket five in the mouth of the crypt of truth. We are the violator called suicide by flagellation. It's all very ambient, intertwined with passages of harsh noise, putrid, and foul music that gets interjected with it. Um, I don't know if this one really holds a lot of black metal. But I don't think that is the point. We have Nachtlich and stuff like that for it. Yeah, Irified Catacomb still is an interesting project in the sense that it's just true horror music. There you go, the guy. So I'm here. 
recorded in one session in the trance of necrophilic afterglow by UE in November 2022. Necrophilia reigns supreme in the slime crypt. I don't know man, he's one of the guys together with um, Inubilis for example with Obscuritatum with 7 inch out that is just very prolific but doesn't disappoint or I don't know or not doesn't put stinkers out like a four letter words for example um, but yeah Botulistum with their self titles once again these are not in order I'm not going to put them below in order it's just records that I enjoyed or that I you know liked during the year um, the comeback for these guys I've been digging for their material like Vein Lake and uh, the demo and stuff like that so at the same time this came out um, Beat Metal Forever reigns supreme it's on New Era and it's a one two three four five six seven tracker in a font I can read Vermont behalf I know that one um, but yeah I can't read the other for shit Peat metal, uh, it's like the brown metal from the Gubrum, but they have the peat metal moniker that goes up. Botmel and Blitzig, I don't know what their monikers are for this. Again, seems they have one more in the ranks. There you go. Cool to see them back. Love that thing. There you go. Not in love with the cover image, but hey. You know. It kind of fits their aesthetic. This is a limited affair, limited to 207. It's numbered on the record itself. But yeah, I hope if they don't do anything besides this, maybe a live show here and there, that would be cool. If that's possible, I don't know. They played before, so. Maybe they're touring already, I just didn't see it yet. Botulistum. Then, maybe the only death metal in here, pretty sure, Untergang and Spectral Voice, who announced their new records with the title I always forget. This is on... This is from Extreme, Extremely Rotten, so I have to see what falls out, but yeah. These two slimy juggernauts teams up to, uh, to bring us a split that was made in hell or uh, was meant to be. Uh, Untergang is the Danish gory death metal um, band that have tons of releases and that also kind of never disappoint. Not in love with all of it but you know when it hits me it hits me right. I am in love with everything Spectral Voice ever did uh, up until now. The new track promises very much for the new record we have. Just a festering split of some brutal Danish death metal and some dead tune from Colorado. This is the black version. It kind of took me by surprise. Surprised how rapidly this sold out. Um, so I hustled and got not the slime green, but the black version. There are of course 7,000 fires, but we're not here for that. There are, of course, Danish flags, but we're also not here for that. There is a poster, but it's from a fest, not from. You have to see that I will put myself in the flame. I'm going to put this back later. But yeah, a very good split. Actually, just to say that Spectral Voice is back. And then, Carve Cross saw them live, fucking finally this year, one of the major bucket list items that got ticked off. This is Cultural Primitivism. There you go. And uh, EP, they dropped around the same time, I think January, as um, the fest was where they played the Pascha Fest in Turin. This is the split with Broken Spirit, another Australian one man project. I am rid of all humans' departure. As I stated a couple of videos before, or maybe when this came out, uh, they have pulled up their sound a bit from the murkiest of Tasmanian sewers and it's much more audible um, it's still far from, <laughs> far from being a uh, Fleetwood Mac but uh, there you go, Carve Cross will always be in the list I guess 
the Broken Spirit kind of crept into my world um, after this came out, and I think after I met the guys, I kind of started talking to the uh, to the guy a bit. I think when the compilation came out on Manifest of Hate, is that the label? I think so. Uh, but yeah, very good records. Broken Spirit is B H, dedicated to R M who died, I guess. Card Crosses. CT, MNNSV, I think, in the Winterheim dungeon. They keep on doing their stuff. Very cool. Geheimnis Hall flyer. There you go. Reminds me that the records, for example, Geheimnis Hall, that came out, but there's a new Evgor, there's a new Geheimnis Hall. It's, they're just not available right now. Um, but yeah. That, um, what else is coming in? The new old tower that should definitely be in the top, but I actually I heard it once and then I decided to wait. There's a Raspberry Bulbs, there's a new Akitsa. I've listened to all of it, but you know the rules. Not on vinyl, not in the top. There you go. The after the split they did a new EP, I think, or a full, whatever you want to call it, Caustic or of Manifest Hallucination. Four tracks on here, Praxis of Concealed Burden, Departure of Submission, Awakening the Perturbation. Awakening 2 Perturbation, Jesus. And Termination Desire, what a nightmare. That track is the third one. Awakening 2 Perturbation. This is the white final version of that one. I think I picked it up at the fest, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Always good to have some more carved cross. I don't know where they are going with it. They have a kind of a reasonably slow year in the sense that these are the maybe two only releases. I'm not sure. The flyer was talking about um, a rehearsal 6 LP box, um, but I don't know what's up with that. So we'll see when that manifests itself. But yeah, you can't, or I can't do it without some craft cross in there. Then, two from the same label. The first one is Art Blocks. Uh, once again, we are in the ancient. Hound sector or bloods after a demo on tape and an EP on 7 inch if I'm not mixing stuff up is um, another project from the ancient Hound circle that looks to mortar for inspiration a bit it is called ghost paths to serpentition uh, and it's it's not that it surprised me how good it was but it's it's actually a very good record uh, from that stable or from uh, those people um, it is a full full length it has mm, six tracks on here across boundless frozen horizons blizzard from the devil's den to the sunless taiga Usai miners black tower mm, i can't read that rise of polaris and fate to white um it's blends a bit from the polish side there's some graveland maybe there's some velas in there but yeah just all through the filter of those ancient hounds, musicians and that group. Um, I didn't like the sound from the tape to the 7 inch, although I should re-listen to it all, but this, uh, yeah, this grab will just the cover, the way it works. Um, sold on this one. Comes with a printed sheet with some lyrics and text on here, and then there is the full crew. There you go. Very good record. Very enjoy, very enjoyable. I think I have the tape too, so yeah, you know what's up. I'm not going to put them all back. I'll do that later. From the same stable, from the same group, um, is the Regnum Tenebrarum with Legende Noire. This is not a cheat in the sense that I played the promo. I think last year, maybe in this video, but uh, it came out this year, so it counts. Real. This is the first one I re-listened to because I checked my what I bought list um, on this course and this was one of the first that was released in 2023 and bought in 2023 uh, and yeah this is just a very very good from the opening synth work um, that dominates the entire record actually this is a black metal record that looks back to how it was done it is ancient in scope it is ancient in sounds um, looks in or blood goes you know Slavic maybe here and there this is French um, inspired I think something like Oskrum and Farm pops up uh, Bekira are the, the names that gets mentioned when people talk about this but yeah 
it is in French, so that helps. But yeah, I lo loved the promo tape I uh, adored the records. And I know it's always the same label, but that's just where the focus for this label is. So yeah. If you can't deal with that, you should look somewhere else. Comes with this photocopied or Xeroxed lyric sheets or you know, Dysaria and so on and so on in Latin. There we go. And then the record is just a nice slab of black wax, but very well pressed. And the future for Medieval Prophecy looks very bright because speaking about also in Infam, they have a triple release coming out from that band. Um, loose, I think, and in a box formation, so there's a lot to look forward to. Um, there's, there's some more coming, but you know, all in good time, I guess. That is the first half of the What I Enjoyed on Vinyl, closing with Magnum, not too shabby. And we'll dive in the last 10 or so in the last part. Here we go. We are still listening to the Blutschwurg. I was going to change it, but this is what I mean. That it's not emo, it's not hardcore, but you know, it's the curse of American black metal at this point, I think. Okay, onwards. We are not in America, we are in Russia and England, and this is Luger with Shoot Me in the Dick. I don't know what it's called because it's, of course, in bloody Russian. It's also unreadable, but yeah. The thing that I can read is you've been seen, and it's the horrible room, some of the horrible room crew, I don't know how it works. And then William Watts from Asket is on here. Co release between Horrible Room and New Era Productions, and this is. Last year was the the, the entire Horrible Room, the Leshy, the Kukulkas, the, the entire start of that thing, and I think maybe in 2020 it, it reared its heads, but um, last year it exploded in the sense that a lot of people jumped on that style, a lot of artists jumped on that style. The, Boy, punk influenced black metal that I still kind of like, but as with so many, you have to take, you know, enter with care in this world because there's a lot that is just easy to click and buy, and then you're stuck with it in a, in a sense. Uh, but this is not the case. This is one of the elevations of that sound, I should say, due to the fact that they work so well together, the Horrible Room and the Oscar crew, um, and yeah, this record works. Um, I think it's in my top five horrible room releases, newer releases, not old. Um, the AF this, the cool cast of Ashes. This one is a very good addition to that thing. The thing I like that New Era did, I think in conspiracy with them, this is a one-sided one, so it's dead wax, but it's just, you know, it's the bare minimum a record can be. Um, it's just no center labels and a lot of those records that Leshy had it, the Kukul Cast will have it when it comes up. Um, so. But yeah, it's that style. If you don't like it, it's, I'm not going to convince you with this one. But um, It is that brutal stomp from Russia to the UK. But there it is. Luger. If you have to, you know, you have to copy it to get, in, to get a YouTube link uh, because it's impossible to find. Then, in the same vein, the tape almost runs out, but speaking about Kukulkest, this is their full length that took me by surprise in so many ways. Um, it should be higher in the stack just to give you the assumption that it is higher in my list, but it's well deserved. From the cover, which is as anti black metal as you can be, it's a forest and a thing in summer or in spring maybe, but they came with a colorful record that was, I think it reached the 70 minute mark or even over and it's, it doesn't get boring anywhere. Uh, they came from the horrible room scene as always, short demos, short bursts of aggression, short everything actually, um, for the short attention span and then to, once again, to say like, I don't know which, which record I said it about, but to, oh, Necropole, to assume I know this record is a bit, no. 70 minutes of uh, aggression, it's so hard, but yeah, the way it is built up, the way the artwork looks, it is very cool. There you go. I, once again, it's Russian, so 
I don't know what to tell you title-wise, but I think, once again, that is the point. This is the limited edition, if you will, I think 100 copies on New Era, and it's, once again, the purest form of vinyl you can have. It is a double LP, both on that transparent green, but yeah, it is a monster of a record, and um, I think they still have the regular black version if you are into everything I just said with the Luger records and the horrible and stuff, you should check this out if you haven't because um, yeah, in that style I think this is the pinnacle for Horrible Room and for Coco Cast 100%. Then one that I should have shown the full length but for now I just have the split by him from this year. This is Geheimnis Hole and I'm uh, the split it is with is Atesh but I am giving it to Geheimnis Hole for the reason that I like his project way better, which nothing bad about Abtesh, but there you go. From America, he runs Nitztang, and I am in love with Geheimnis Hall since the first time I heard it, since he, I had tickets to go, or I had plans to go to the Netherlands show, or um, when I played in Italy, but you know, unfortunately, here is the guy. He has a name, but I don't know what it is, but yeah. Geheimnis Hole lens from a bunch of stuff, but mostly French. Um, yeah, it covers him with his glorious axe, flooded in red, very nicely produced. Also, a thick slab of red wax. There you go. Abdesh's Matthias project, of course. And then there is the original flyer. Look at that when all the bands were playing. Still, there are the pictures by Atesh yeah, that are really cool. Love this one. Sick picture. And then there's the Return of Geheimnis Hall, which I showed already. But yeah, it's flawless discography for now. I listened to the full length a bit today, but yeah, this guy. Cheers. There we go. I'm going to cut once more. So yeah, last part, I've put on Odal by Techno Viking just to, you know, after this is done, it's New Year, so maybe we'll have a party um, just to get in the atmosphere. Some people are coming over. Yeah. Let's finish this amber sourness and then delve into something else. These are the last one, two, three, six or seven. So yeah, around the hour mark. Baksak Saksa, um, yeah, the Vermis Mysteries records from Germany, from the bands around B from Party Time, B from uh, Iron Monet, but yeah, there are people in here that um, are equally as talented or as gifted on Sinister Flame. Once again, saw them live, um, and that, I don't know why, but it kind of gives the the record next to it I mentioned, seeing those tracks live, seeing how they perform, how they are on stage. Uh, and yeah, this came in late in the year. I listened to it digitally a few times, but uh, let's not get the party started entirely. Uh, listened to it digitally a few times, spun it a few times, but it's just a very good record that once again looks back to what has happened and they were there in the beginning because yeah, they are. Uh, have been playing for a long, long time. Really nicely put out um, this one and the Mayhem or the Euronymous record or the Sinister Flames 1 and 2, I think, for this year. Yeah, I sh recently showed it, so I'm not going to go through it all, but the record that I enjoy very much this year, band that I enjoy very much throughout the years. Um, yeah, there you go, the famous Mysteries. And this gets, I've seen this pop up in a lot of end of the year lists, reasonably so, or deserved. Really great artwork. Then, Aldrich popped up last year with his two Blood EPs. This is um, the folklore from further out. Aldrich started on Cold Beach, is now on Amor Fati, and this is his, I don't know, all the things 
this guy does from Old Ridge to Albionic Hermeticism that I talked about the last time that I will talk about in the next video. Um, yeah, it's just one of those, like I said, with um, Anubilis from uh, Obscuritatum, Obscuritatum. This guy, they are the new Renaissance men that are that know what they are playing, that have a vision for each project that they are doing, that have respect for what has come or has been, and yeah, just produce very good music. My command of the Hermetic Order of the Aten, once again, and this is, like I said, a steady flow of releases for this guy. Nicely put out through Amorfati, which came back on my scope, actually, um, a ton of good releases like Urhex, like Discaterion, um, that should be on here too, but you know, they are being ordered or being listened to as we speak, you can buy everything. Yeah. Lyric sheets with a nice goat on the back. So yeah, releases that are very well worked out and worth picking up if you're into good white metal. Sounds on here is maybe just a tinge rawer than, um, than the Albionic Hermeticism, but like I said, more on that later. Not getting it in. So. Old Rich deserved. Then we get into the nitty gritty of records. Clandestine Blaze with Resacralize the Unknown, the umpt full length for this band that uh, flawless discography. I said it, or maybe Geheim is full. I don't know which one I said it about, but this one for sure. Like I said in the previous video, I don't know every record by heart, but I never heard a bad record by Clandest and Blaze. Birth of the Sun, Tombstone of Christianity, which is a banger of track. Only the shadows of this world are crossed to bear. Bring me the head, resacralize the unknown, and mass graves of all eternity. On his very own Northern Heritage label that... Yeah, not too many stinkers there either. There you go. Love this picture. Very good, very good records. Um, it's basically a one-man project, but he has help here and there by friends, label friends. There you go, White Beggar. This is one of the outtakes from the artwork. Very well produced, very nice looking records. And yeah, it's just a steady stream by Nichols. Premier band, if you don't take uh, the death spell into consideration, but yeah, I don't know. I give the edge to Clandestine Blaze for now. Um, we'll see what death spell comes up with, but you know, nothing this year. Then, one that has stuck with me is Diabolical Full Moon with, and here we go, Resurrection of the Ancient Fate, Unholy Reborn Polish Black Metal Arts, a duo from Poland that honors, respects, and regurgitates Polish black metal from the heyday, like Feles, like early Graveland, like this, these guys. Um, just people that, yeah, once again, like with uh, the previous records, that know what happened in the past and that just, not just copy and, and just vomit it out, but it, yeah, just give their own twist or, or just do it very, very well. And these are, the Pagan Wolves was good, this one is even a step up. So yeah. um, intro Fall of Israel, the Pagan Spirit, Resurrection of the Ancient Faith, while Fulig is next to Battle Amok, it just keeps on going storm through the Pagan lands. Anti religion, anti life, very hateful records here. Him and I don't know what they're. This, what's the female called? Not, I think, Diabolical Poetry and Leshy, all instruments, vocal and compositions. Worships only true Polish black metal and every act of aggression against Christians, Jewish, Kams and Muslims. This music is dedicated only to elite, pure-minded individuals who support traditional evil black metal. There you go. Thunderbolt shirts, Vlad Tepe shirts. That should tell you enough about influences. There is a card in here for, I don't know, Obscure Twilight, maybe, I don't know, the um, the bands around or that are surrounding Diabolical Full Moon are also very worth picking up. And if you like black metal, you should, like, my scope went off Single Hex for a while, 
due to the fact that you know there was some stuff going on, but you know, the scope is fully back on their imports, their releases. There you go. This is the silver and black merch of this record. And yeah, pick it up, I guess. It's the only thing left for me to say about this one. I love it. I really look looking forward to see where they are going to go next. Uh, there is a there's a rehearsal tape or a I don't know. Maybe it's older than this record. There are they are on too many labels and it's a bit scattered all over. But yeah, this one, Diabolical Full Moon. Recommend it. Then Nachtwind, Breath of Night, the Belgian black metal release of the year. There's no the group room, so I can give it to them. Their 20th year anniversary release after um, the other records that I just bought that I'm blanking on right now. Yeah, I'm blanking on. Um, this is their re-release 20 years, not the re-release, this is their release 20 years later and this is called uh, Breath of Night. A very cold, hateful Belgian black metal record that uh, yeah, takes no prisoners. Talked about it before, loved the, um, the descriptions in the Medieval Prophecy video too back, I guess. When I listened to it first, it started with Shattered Roots because that is such an explosive track um, that just takes the second half of this record into overdrive. But when was the last time that the, the B side was better than the A side? I think Black Flag comes to mind, but that's it. Uh, but then listening back to it, it's just the, the tracks on the A side are very good, but it just builds up to the explosion of aggression on Shattered Roots. But very, very good record. Like I said, Belgian release of the year for me. To 250 on, of course, Medieval Prophecy. I love how they implemented the Obi. Love everything about it from artwork to the staunchness or the starkness of how it works. Yeah, and there you go. This is what's coming up apart from the um, Oscar Motam, Wachtot, a Pagan Pride, which is one of the bands that is surrounding, I guess, the Bulk of Moon, but I'm not sure. Vitium, a new LP, NCD, and then the Tyrgul compilation, which Tyrgul is also next level. This came out on a nasty slab of black wax. There is a skull with hair on that side, so you have everything you need to know. Um, yeah, so glad they are back, that they have returned, and then with the records, the strength of this. Look for it. Uh, there's 250 copies. I'm not sure it's still in stock at either of the usual distros, but yeah, I think they have copies worldwide. So um, if you can't find it, at least listen to it because this is you know, the records now. These are all recommendations. We are well into the top five. I think this is three, I guess. Then the one that should be number one, because I did a video solely about this record, is Vertumnus Kaiser. I'm not going to go back into Rudolf the second, but yeah, Malachar Payton hit this year. They have, this is their fourth full length. I always kind of ignored them because I'm an idiot, uh, but it just, like I said, it grabbed me. My interest in history is popping up. This record popped up and it just worked. This is, there is 30 seconds of black metal on here, but it's very good, 30 seconds, but the heavy metal mixed with uh, with everything, with uh, the intent of black metal, with the lyrics, with the artwork, with how it all works together. This is basically my record of the year. Although I have to cheat once again. On Invictus Records, I talked about it enough. Malachar Payton, Vertumnus Kaiser. What is actually my record of the year? Um, and it's on Medieval Prophecy again, I'm very sorry, but it is Metaphysica Bar Barstva, and I think Malakar Payton or Adam will forgive me that I didn't put um, Malakar Payton on one, but these are three tracks, two tracks and an interlude actually, but it's just, I return to it over and over and over again. When I was bored of, when the record was played out, I got the tape from um, the guy from Medieval, from Jay, and it, I just played the tape over and over again. This is the pre, if this is a precursor to the new full length, the full length was from last year, so I can't include it again, but um, yeah, it should have been a cheat record too. This is the perfect aftermath to the full length that came, but it is the perfect precursor to hopefully what is going to come. Adam Malakar Payton and his brother, 
uh, stellar knobs on vocals and drums and less of the guitars, bass and synths, yeah. Incredible. And I guess it was born out of the tracks that they didn't use for Malachar Payton, but we are all so much richer for it. Um, I can't read it because it's basically in Czechoslovakian, I guess, but um, yeah. Number one, EP, together with the Malachar Payton, that's a nice one too. Here is the flyer, or a sticker, I'm not sure. Flyer, I guess. There is a literary sheet that is all in their native tongue. And then that is a flyer, but the record is basically a nice white slab of vinyl 33 RPM with some dust in there, other colors and stuff like that. I think that is a face or a fist. Looks like a face. There you go. That is basically my number one. Or the, I think if I uh, if I had it on digital, it would be my most listened to for sure. So that's that. But to be honest, it's a one-two with the Malachar Payton record. This is just a bit more folk influenced, local folk influenced, a little bit more black metal influenced. Uh, so a bit more up my alley. Yeah, one hundred percent gold. That's it. We have made it another year around the sun. I wasn't going to do this video like always, like everyone, but here we are. We made it. Over an hour of some really good music. Like I said, there are tons of shit I listen to or tons of records I listen to that are not in here. I'm looking at Slayer. I'm looking at all of these. Um, but yeah, you can't do everything. And I just wanted to focus on you know, the smaller under underground stuff. So. I think we managed that again. Hope you like it. Please drop your, don't don't give me a 50 list, just give me a top three, maybe a top 10, uh, so I can check some stuff out in this region or you know, whatever. We're listening to Old All for crying out loud. You know, I'll skip maybe the label of the year, but yeah, let's face it, medieval prophecy will always be there. For now, reigning supreme. That's it, thank you. I have my thanks list would be another hour, but yeah, off the top of my head. So. The guy from Quad, the Pinigrinus uh, on Instagram, who made me a good trade. Uh, there's too much. To, yeah, it's just too much, but him for sure, because he was the last one that uh, did me a good, good solid. So thank you to him. That shit will pop up real soon. Yeah. Thank you to you all for sticking with me. It's been a tough year getting videos done because, you know, life gets in the way, the kids drain my energy in a sometimes good way mostly very frustrating way if you uh, want to do stuff like this but yeah it's going to be worth it in the end i hope 24 will have more interviews but it's it's kind of hard getting the right people and if you get the right people to get them on camera when i mention it's a video blog they always say ah i'm sorry but yeah we'll figure a way around it that's it happy new year it is in good tradition, the first of the new year. So happy new year. I hope your hangover is manageable and we'll see you in a bunch of new videos that I prepared already that just needs to be filmed. That's it. Thank you to everybody. Have a great 2024.